Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 1 of DBMS super important questions and these questions are taken from the previous paper and the model paper. Don't miss any of these questions, these are the most important ones and if you have any doubts you can DM on Instagram here. And before starting please do like and subscribe, it helps make more videos like this. So without wasting more time, let's get started. The first question is what is database? Okay, and explain the three schema architecture with a neat diagram and why do we need mapping between schema levels? Okay, so database is an electronically stored collection of data. Okay, whatever the data we are going to use in the phone or in the system, all those are stored in a place called as database. Okay, so what is three schema architecture? In three schema architecture, the whole data and the applications is divided into three layers. Okay, so that the data comes from here and reaches the end user. Okay, it uh, happens in three layers. So the first layer is the internal level. In internal level or an internal schema, it describes the physical storage structure of the database. How the physically database is stored, what are the structure inside it that is defined by the internal schema. Okay, it uses a physical data model and describes the complete, de complete detail of the data storage and access path for the the database okay that is in the internal level next comes the conceptual level conceptual level is in between the application level and the internal level okay so it is in between and it describes the structure of the whole database community for a community of users the conceptual schema hides the details of physical storage structures and concentrates on describing entities data types and relationships user operations and constraints okay these things it will describe okay and this is a high level data model that is the uh, implementation of the conceptual schema model next is the external view or the view level it includes the number of external schemas or the user views it includes who all are going to use it okay the end users will be present and from their perspective how the database looks like that will be described okay each external schema describes the part of the database that a particular user group is interested in and hides the rest of the database from that user group okay just what the user requires that much database will be visible rest will be hidden okay why do we need mapping between between them first reason is data independence there are two types of data independence one is logical data independence one is physical data independence in logical data independence you can change the conceptual schema like adding a new field without affecting the user views okay user view will not be affected and you can change the uh, schema also you can add new fields that is logical data independence second is physical data independence you can change how data is stored internal schema without changing how users access access it which is conceptual schema okay so the data which is stored that can be changed without changing how the users are accessing it because of these two reasons there is a mapping required okay that is data independence second reason is consistency and integrity ensures that changes at one level are correctly reflected in other levels without introducing con inconsistencies if there is no mapping between them you will not know what is happening in the other levels and there will be inconsistency that's why mapping is required third reason is user customization different users may need different views of the data so external schema maps to their custom view to share the conceptual schema fourth reason is security Mapping ensures that sensitive data can be hidden at the external level by not including it in the certain views, even if it is existing in the conceptual schema. Fifth is performance optimization. The internal schema can be fine-tuned for performance. Okay, so if there is mapping, the internal schema can be fine-tuned more for performance. Okay, without affecting how data is structured or accessed. Next question is what are the advantages of using DBMS approach? First is controlling redundancy. The duplicate data is reduced if you use the DBMS approach, okay? Because DBMS will not allow to uh, in the insertion of duplicate data. Second is restricting unauthorized use. Who is not authorized, they will not be able to use it. Providing persistent storage for program objects, okay? There will be a persistent storage for the program object data and providing storage for the structures of efficient query processing. Once we run the query, we'll get some data, right? The answers that also will be stored somewhere. So it provides that solution structures and providing backup and recovery by using DBMS. We can have a backup as well in case of any crashes and providing multiple user interfaces. Multiple users can use the same database through uh, different uh, interfaces and representing complex relationship among data. Okay. If it is not DBMS, we just the data will be stored. But if it is DBMS, there will be we will be also able to see what is the relationship between the data next is enforcing integrity constraints what kind of data is accepted and which is not accepted you cannot put a alphabet in an in data type right so that is a constraint so that will ensure that proper data is put in it or put in the particular positions and permitting inferencing and action actions via rules if it is a declarative db or directive db in that we can uh, write a rule and uh, by using the existing data we can infer new data okay so that also is uh, possible via the DBMS approach. Okay. 
Next question is explain component modules of DBMS and their interactions with a neat diagram. Okay, component modules, what is component modules and how are their interactions? So you need to understand there are two parts. Okay, this is the top part, this is the bottom part. These are the users, okay, and what are they doing? And these are the component modules. Okay. So here also there are four DBA staff, casual user, application programmer, and parametric users. Okay. Now see. First, we'll start with the stored database. This stored database will have all data and it is managed by stored data manager. Okay. So the database or the DBMS catalog are often stored on the disk. Access to the data is controlled by operating system which schedules the disk input output. And we, who is managing it? A higher level uh, stored data manager module of the DBMS controls access to the DBMS information that is stored on the disk. The dotted lines and circles marked illustrate the accesses that are under the control of the data manager. Okay. This one, the dotted lines. These are controlled directly by the data manager. Next. The DDL compiler processes the schemas. Okay, what it does? It processes the schema definition and then it does the um, processing. I mean the action. And catalog includes information such as names, files, size, files, and the data types of the data items, storage details of each file. So the catalog includes all of that. Okay, so where is catalog? This is the catalog. Okay, so it includes all those metadata. Okay. Next is runtime database processor. It handles database access at runtime. So this is the runtime database processor. It handles the database at the runtime. Next is query compiler. It compiles high level queries that are intra entered interactively. Okay. And pre compiler extracts the DML commands from the application program written in a host programming language. These commands are sent to DML compiler for the compilation. Okay. So pre compiler extracts those and sends to DML compiler. The rest of the program is sent to the host language compiler. The object codes for the DML commands and rest of the program are linked. Forming a CAN transaction whose executable code also intends to call, includes the call to the runtime data processor. So, whatever the remaining things are there, the host database, all those queries are processed in this point and it is sent to the stored data. Uh, I mean, the processor and the processor calculates the data and that is stored in the database. Okay. And you can perform the input output operation via the stored manager. Next is explain the following terms. Okay, so first is data dictionary. It is a centralized repository. Okay, so that stores metadata. As I told you, what is metadata? Names of the tables and columns, data types, constraints, and relationship between table, all these kind of data, which is data about the data, right? Data about the data that is stored in the data dictionary. Next is weak entity. The entity which cannot be uniquely identified by its own is called as weak identity. Like example, dependent. Dependent means the family members of an employee. The family members cannot be directly represented in a company database so they will be represented via the uh, at, via the entity employee okay and uh, next is attribute attribute is nothing but like name of student total number of student those things are attributes of the student next is entity entity is nothing but a place person event or product stored in a record in a database okay that represents a real world object composite attribute means a attribute that can be divided into smaller subparts for example full name can be divided into first name and last name multi-valued attribute means a value uh, attribute which can have multiple values like for example one person can have multiple phone numbers or emails that is a multi-valued attribute participation role means it refers to an entity place in a relationship how it plays total participation means every entity must participate in the relationship partial means only some will Next is data model. Data model is a conceptual framework that defines how data is structured, stored, related, and manipulated. Examples include relational data model, ER model, and object-oriented model. How the data is represented, stored, and related. Okay, that is called as the data model. Next is what are the responsibilities of DBA and D, uh, database designer? DBA means what? Database administrators who is handling the database. So they are, uh, res their responsibility is to install and configure the database, backup and recovery they have to handle, they have to perform, uh, monitor the performance and tune it, and security wise they have to perform who is uh, having the permission to access and is the data encrypted and protective to sensitive data, and data integrity and consistency is there or not to uh, maintain the accuracy and reliability of the data, user management which all users are allowed to access and database maintenance okay the regular update statistics rebuild indexes and performing health checks these are the responsibilities for the dba database administrator next is database designer they will design okay so they are more creative kind so here they will be having the requirement analysis based on the requirements only they will be analyzing so they are understanding the business needs and translate them into data requirements then the data using the er diagram they'll design the schema they'll apply normalization rules they'll document everything and collaboration will be there work with the dba developer and stakeholders to actually know what is required and scalability and flexibility will also will be there okay so th this is all for the module one of dbms and if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe it helps make more like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one